Hey guys, Krista here. I talk a lot about color on this channel because as a web designer, color can really make or break your website design. If you don't have a color palette yet, pause this video and click on this one right here. It's gonna teach you how to create a color palette for your brand. If you've already done that or you already have a color palette to work with, this video is gonna teach you how to add it to your show at design and how to make it actually look good. And the secret to getting more sales or bookings or getting visitors to take the action you want them to take on your website often comes down to the way that your website looks and the way that you guide viewers through a website. And that can really be emphasized and done through color. Color is one of the most important elements of a website. I actually spent a lot of time in design school studying color. Dave used to make fun of me that it was all about coloring, but it was all about the theory of color and the way that different colors can make you feel different ways. For example, blue is often associated with feelings of peace and serenity. Yellow and orange and red are all energizing, although red can also go in the angry category. And if you want something to feel fresh, organic, healthy, you're gonna wanna use the color green. We've also learned to associate different colors with different brands. Think Target Red or Staples Red. Maybe you asked somebody wearing red in one of those stores how to find a particular item only to realize that they didn't actually work there. Or maybe you were the one wearing red in one of those stores. And while I don't think that you need to look into the psychology behind every color that you choose on your website, I do think it's important to think through some of the psychological aspects of color and pay attention to how they're used in your brand and on your website. Here's a good example. We have these two purple colors. One is really bright and energizing. It feels really youthful. And the other is more lavender in tone and it feels calming and peaceful and serene. Maybe you're getting like French lavender field, Marseille vibes. These colors actually come from the same starting tone. One is just the brighter end of the spectrum and then the other one is the toned down, softened, lighter version. Same color, different intensities, and totally different looks and feel. And that is what we want to pay attention to when we're choosing colors for our website. At the time I'm recording this, color experts, yes, I know what you're thinking, there are color experts. They're predicting that this year's trends are going to be soft pinks, softer blue, and nature tones. If you pay attention to the color world, you might know that in 2023, the color of the year was Viva Magenta, and it was really bright and intense. But this year, we're gonna see those colors scaled back a little bit. And you're gonna to start to notice that in fashion and web design and brand design, really anything that uses color and pays attention to color, this is where those trends start to flow and you'll see them pop up. Our team has a lot of fun putting together our own color palettes based on what the predictions for this year are. And we're gonna take one of those color palettes and apply it to a show at website. Whenever we put together color palettes, especially ones that we know are gonna be used on a website, we try to pull a few different types of colors. The first is a primary color. So think Barbie pink, Walt Disney blue, and a brand can have more than one primary color. Brands like Pepsi with its red and blue are a good example of this. In this example, I'm gonna use a color palette that is inspired by Country Club Chic because Preppy is having a moment in 2024. And in this particular example, we're gonna use two primary colors. One is a like natural green, and the other is a still bright but toned back bright blue. And any good website also has a few lighter tones, softer, neutral tones is what we often call them, that can be toned back and used as backgrounds of different sections on a site. This keeps the whole site from being all one color, especially like an all white background site. It just makes the site more interesting and helps break up all of the visuals and all of the text. Sometimes we make these tones by scaling back a primary color and using a really soft version of it, but we often pull complementary colors and then scale those back because those are a great way to find neutral tones that complement the color. In this particular example, I'm gonna go with a light tan and a light gold because I think both of those are gonna work well with the blue and green and they fit with this subtle, classic country club aesthetic. Websites also need a color that has some pop and stands out. Think about using this for buttons or calls to action or anything that really needs to stand out. This is gonna be a color that's used pretty sparingly because you really only wanna use it in places that you want the eye to focus on. So buttons are a great example. And all websites need a text color. So this is gonna be a color that has some contrast with the background and makes it easy to read the text. I die a little bit inside when I see beautiful websites using really, really soft gray text or pink text 
or any text that just is really hard to read because it's highly likely that the visitors are not actually taking the time to read this text because it's probably giving them a headache. So make sure that you have a text color that has enough contrast that it's easy to read. If you're ever not sure about this, try lowering the brightness on your computer or your phone because a lot of people who visit a phone from their mobile device are not viewing their website at its full intensity. Their screens are probably lowered down. And so you wanna make sure that your text is visible and easy to read even if they have that lower contrast on their site. Here's a case in point. I actually took our Marseille design and lowered the intensity of the color of the font. And I think it's really, it's a struggle to read it. But as I scroll, do you see how when we get to the black and white section where the background of this testimonial area is black and then the text is white, it gets so much easier to read. That's because there's a lot more contrast there and the eye needs that contrast in order to differentiate the text from the background. Okay, so now that we have our color palette of six colors, let's apply this to a website. This is our Marseille design. It's a favorite of our team and it's a bestseller in the shop. I went ahead and sourced a few images from some of our favorite stock photo sites, in this case, Eleve and Pexels, and all of them fit with the country club chic aesthetic. And you'll also notice that they have the tones of the colors already in the images in themselves. And so I think it's important to keep in mind that not only can you bring color in through the actual design elements of your website, imagery also can bring a lot of color into your website and keep it interesting. In order to add your colors to your short website, you're gonna to need to make sure that you have the hex codes. If you only have the RGB colors or the CMYK or the Pantone colors, if you have something like Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, you can select those color settings and then flip over and view the hex code. Or there are a lot of online color generators out there and so you can put in those color numbers that you have and then it'll output the hex code for you. And as a side note, I'm using the Show It website editor for this tutorial because I've used a lot of website platforms out there and hands down, Show It is just the easiest to use, especially when it comes to colors. But for now, let's assume that you have your hex codes ready to go. Okay, so I had to put my glasses on for this next part so that I can focus on my screen. But I'm gonna show you how to implement this in a short website. So I'm gonna first go to my design settings and then we can see my colors in here. And I'm gonna start by grabbing my text color and then I'm gonna replace it with the current text color, which is oftentimes one on a, in a show at website template. So I'm gonna do that one. Next, I'm gonna grab one of my neutral colors and I can kind of see, because I looked ahead on the design, and because I made the design, um, that four is used for a lot of the backgrounds where we have some differentiation. So I'm gonna paste my light tan color in here and it's super similar, which is gonna be good for continuity and decreasing my workload on the site. Number five is also fairly neutral, although maybe I'll go with number seven for this next one. So I'm gonna put my gold in here and I might even lighten it a little bit just to make it really feel more like a neutral. I'm gonna grab my green and I think I'm gonna put green in spot number five because these are kind of colors that have a little bit more contrast on the site but aren't as contrasty as one and two. So I'll paste my green in there. I'm gonna grab my blue and put that in spot number six. And I'm gonna grab my call to action brown and I'm gonna put that over here on two. And then this could be another color if I had another color in my palette. And a lot of times, at least in the designs I create, I leave white as the background color. Um, so if I wanted this to not be a purely white site, if I wanted it, it to have a subtle tint to it, I could put that in here. Or if I wanted to make the whole site have a black background and white text, I could put black right here and I could switch this number one to white. I'm also gonna change the color in here of all of the titles because this is gonna change them all in, at once. So I'm gonna click this and I want it to be green. And then that's all I'm gonna do with this part. So I'll hit save. And then we actually have my design. So in here, if I click on it, I can see that this is number five now. It could also be number one, although I think that I like the green better with this orange color right here. And then this spot right here, I could click on this button right here and set it to have this brown background color, get rid of the border, and then make the text white. Although in looking at that, I feel like this brown is just too different from this brown. So I have a couple of options. So first I could click on this brown and I could warm it up. So 
I go more in this direction and maybe make it a little bit darker and make it have more similarity in tone to this color right here. Or I could change it to a green, which I actually like better and I think still fits within the aesthetic of the site. If I was actually gonna take the time to do this whole site right now, I would also turn on mobile and I would start cleaning up mobile and make sure that all of the colors look um, look readable and legible on mobile. If you notice on mobile that you need to change some of the settings, like if you want this background to be a color, but you want it to be white on the desktop, we could come up here and click these little dots and split the desktop on mobile, and then we could make this have a color, or you can make this green. Um, so sometimes when you're designing, you, you notice that you need to separate the styles between desktop or mobile, and that's an option. And we could do the same with this button right here. I could come up to shape style, and I could make this a different color. I could come up right here, and I could separate desktop and mobile, and then I could flip over to mobile, and and if I wanted this to be blue, I could do that. I'm not gonna take the time right now to go through all of the settings for mobile as well, just to keep this video concise, but I just wanted to show you that that is an option within Show It. This next section just pulled in the green automatically because of where I put the colors, and I think that's really dark and hard to read. So I'm gonna switch this to be number four. I'm gonna check that this is green, and then in this spot, I think it would be nice if we used our brown color for the button. I'll get rid of that border, and then I'm gonna make this white so the white text pops more and it's easier to read. This next section, this part is green, and then these pulled in the green, and I think that that's nice. It just adds a little bit of differentiation so it's not all black text on white, and I like the way that it looks. In here, I'm gonna warm this section up a bit by giving it a blue background, and so I think that the blue works well with the image itself. Um, we could also do tan if we wanted to switch out all of the colors in the, of the text in here, but for now I'm gonna go with blue. I like the, the green right here, and I like these being black. I think that it makes the text a little bit easier to read, and I don't think that these seem to have a lot of contrast. This section I think is hard to read with the green. I could get away with making the text white, but I think that I'm gonna switch this to be a tan background because I think that the tan is softer over the image and it works better with the tones within the image. I see a lot of tan in her shirt and her socks and all of the whites are not really a pure white, they're kind of a light tan. And so I think that this works well here. In here, I don't love the green over the orange. I feel like it has a little bit too similarity in tones, and so it's kind of hard to read. So I'm gonna flip it to be black so that it ups the contrast a little bit. This, I'm also gonna flip to black because I think that just looks nice. And then I don't love like the dark gray right here, so I'm gonna make this green. And I think that works really well with the tones in this image as well as the tones in this image. So it's enough contrast, but it's also enough like continuity between the tones that it feels like it fits. I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna make all of these green because I like having the headlines green and a lot of the different spots. And then I'm gonna go back up on my page and I'm going to copy this brown color. So on my Mac, I'm gonna hit Command C and I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna hold this or click on this button and then do Command Shift V and that'll paste the color. And then I can make this brown and I think that that works well. This could also probably go green if I wanted to go green. Actually, I might like the green. Um, and then these are green. And then I like this being an outline because I think it adds enough contrast in that it's the shape of a button, but it's not too much contrast. I'm gonna hide this pop-up because I'm not gonna use pop-up on this example. And then this pop-up I'm gonna keep and I'm gonna give it a blue color. So if I come back up here and I hit publish, and I open my page and I scroll down. You can see all of the, you can see all of my colors were added and it really changed look and feel just by changing a few colors and it only took a few minutes to do. And I think that that is one of the great things about designing with Show It, especially if you know how to put the colors in in a way that saves you time. Okay, so there you have it. An updated design that almost feels ready for a weekend match. If you like this video and you want to learn more about color theory and how to find great colors for your business, for your client's business, if you're a designer, I'm going to link a few other color videos over here.
also going to link the free brand questionnaire that we have below and the training that comes along with it that shows you how to find great colors for your brand. And if the ease of Show It just blew your mind and you want to learn more about working with Show It, I'll link some of our other Show It tutorials here. And you can head to our shop, davingkrista.com shop to find your new online home. Thanks for joining me.